In this video, <clears throat> our objective is to get a very high level view uh, of uh, the different files or uh, steps in a way that we go through for converting a C to eventually machine code that can get executed uh, along with libraries and whatever else we're going to add to it. <clears throat> So, uh, in, in order to get a little bit of understanding of the steps that occur, uh, let's start by kind of determining what are some of the resulting files from the process. So, you write your C code, C program code, in, and you have to save it in a file with a .c extension. What happens is that when during the compilation process, you're going to generate something called file.list. Um, some of, uh, in earlier videos, and if you work with MP uh, with MP Labs and Pick Micro, you've come across the disassembly code, and this is very similar to that, and it's actually an expanded version of that where we've got the C code, we've got the assembly code, and all that in the same file, so you can kind of see your C code, your assembly code, your machine code, all of that in that one file. Another file that gets generated is called file.map. And this file basically has all the location of your data elements, program elements, uh, variables, functions, and all of that. Uh, it basically is a map of memory and where all those different things are located. And then finally, it generates something called the file.o, and that's an object code, extension.o. And that's going to be your object code. That's where the machine, that is your machine code. That's what will, uh, uh, at the end of the day, will basically uh, be integrated with all the other libraries and other programs into become an executable code. So, so uh, we the process is that from the file dot c, uh, you do a compilation and basically you're in the assembly language. You've gone to the next level of the assembly language. Once you're in the assembly language, you are uh, processor specific uh, at that point. C, we like to think of C as being processor independent, so a C code should run on any processor. But once you have compiled it, you've compiled it for a specific set of hardware and it's going to only run on those hardware. And so that's more or less the compiler step here. And then uh, compiler also in, in the process uh, with some work kind of interchanging with the linker will generate the dot map as well. And then the assembler will take that and will generate uh, the dot o, dot o file. Okay. In modern day um, IDEs, all of that is hidden from you. You basically say, okay, make my... Uh, program and it goes through and goes through all of those steps. The only time a typical programmer really gets to see all of those things is when something is going wrong or uh, they have a reason to want to take over the automatic uh, you know, creation or allocation of spaces and things like that. And there are some cases where you have a speed constraint or you have a space constraint where you have to handcraft your code at the assembly and machine code level and you have to kind of massage where the data is located. In those cases are the only times in today's uh, programming world we get down to looking at those files um, and working with it. Of course, if you are a system designer, then you have to understand all of these and deal with them. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, for an example, this has been kind of a high-level conversation around the different files you generate and what happens. Let's take a minute and go over and take a look at uh, some examples. Here, here is a here is an example. This, this piece of code right here, uh, unfortunately, I can draw on it anymore, is basically a C code. It's really simple. If you look at it, it's just got a main. Of course, it includes the .h, so you get you know, you get all those nice constants so you don't have to de define all of those things. And I'll talk about .h file, what is in that .h file for pick micro. And then all this does is a really simple problem. Nothing gets passed to it, nothing passes out of it. All it's gonna do is gonna declare an integer variable count and it's gonna increment it by one. How simple can that be? Well, we're gonna include .h file so we can get all those 
you know, all, all the various things define port A defines, the analog, the clocks, all everything is defined in here. And this is this is probably 20, 30, 40 pages. And instead of me copying in it, I just basically gave you the starting page and then cut everything in the middle and give you a last page as well. Just so you see, you know, how it's done. It's basically a huge, huge collection of a bunch of defines in this whole thing. So that's a .h, it's going to be included in your .c file, but just .c, remember, it was very, very simple. And now that the compiler has taken a hold of it, notice, uh, so, so let's see some of the things we know. So let's go ahead and find where the reset is going to happen. The reset is going to happen right here. When the reset happens, we're going to jump to location address 00. The first column is the address. When we jump in here, we're going to execute EF81F000. And if you go to your uh, uh, data sheet and figure out what code this is, it's going to be go to. So in the C, we didn't have to do that. The fact that you wrote the main generated all this go to from the reset to the main because that's where it's going to go and if you notice as the code gets started almost <coughs> every variable is being used that is being used is being used as part of indirect addressing because that allows a lot of flexibility but before we get carried away this says, okay, as soon as I reset, jump to location 102. And my expectation is that location 102, it is an all overhead stuff they gotta do to get you ready to execute your first statement. So we're gonna jump over to 102 somewhere down here. <coughs> and um, that's where kind of the, oh, is it 102? Yeah. So that's where the real code actually gets to start executing okay so so that's kind of a, this is the dot list file this is got as you can see it's got it's got the c code see the main this is the this is the c code void main this is what happened to it uh, to the that's how it got converted to the assembly code and here is the machine code and this is simply the address of it so the, the dot list is really you can think about it as a super um assembly listing this assembly listing cover this assembly listing only had the address the machine code and the assembly now you're going to have the c code as well okay so that was that list now let's go ahead and take a look at that map in case you haven't oh this is the rest of it i uh, rest of uh, that oh the, the, the yeah, yeah so let's go ahead and see if i can find here, there we go. This is the dot map file, and notice it's keeping track of all the various section where are all the different parts of the code is going to end up, and uh, and any location of memory that it's going to access, any variable it's got, all of that will be listed here, and it will tell you how much of the program memory is using, from where to where, uh, where all the symbols are pointing to, and all of that kind of good stuff. Okay, so that's that's kind of giving you a sense of, and of course I don't have the dot O in here because it's gonna be a bunch of binaries and it's gonna be a bunch of hex values that is really hard to understand uh, what it means. But but what it's basically gonna be is gonna be all these, let me go back up top, it's gonna to be all these machine codes kind of packed together in sequence. So look at this CC, CF, D9, FF, C, uh, E6, CFE1, all of those kind of lined up together. That makes the .o file, okay? So, so that's kind of an overview of you. When you write a C code, what happens to it? As you notice, that little C code, and I have not really included these, the full uh, listing for .dot uh, full uh, uh, file of .lst or uh, .dot uh, map. Otherwise, there would be hundreds of pages uh, in some cases. Uh, but the reason is in order for me to run this little simple program and see there is a lot of overhead structure that has to be built in order for a C code to run on top of it. So it does expand 
uh, and it, it's a really good exercise. MP Lab offers the assembler and the compiler. I would encourage you to just to get that is free from uh, microchip. Download the uh, the uh, compiler, write a simple program, and start looking to see how the C gets converted and how heavily the indirect addressing uh, plays uh, plays a role in. Uh, variables and you using using those indirect addressing to define the variable use them in operations and things of that nature okay so that brings us to the end of this quick overview of um, how things go from dot C to dot list to dot map and finally to a machine code or a binary code of which is in dot O files